Wonderful. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining the session. Also to our speakers, um, welcome everybody. This is a very special day, International Lesbian Day 2020. I have a beautiful bunch of speakers uh, in this space uh, with me today. And um, we're, we're starting a little bit later than expected because, well, we, we had a little bit of um, issues with uh, technology. And uh, I, I, I wanted to invite everybody to be indulgent with us today because we're also gonna be speaking several languages. <laughs> And with technology, you never know what might happen. So uh, let's just be uh, patient with ourselves. So for um, today, we have a beautiful discussion prepared. Um, uh, we wanted to talk about uh, lesbian history, uh, archiving lesbian history, um, valuing lesbian history, and how uh, actually, we have very beautiful examples here in the space today with us in terms of how uh, lesbian activists are doing this. And we have, um, uh, we have an intergenerational uh, list of speakers today. We have uh, speakers from many different parts uh, of Europe and uh, also uh, Russia. Um, and you'll see that we have uh, activists doing this work um, in so many different ways. And the, the reason why we, um, you know, as, as ELC, we were thinking, um, what should we do for International Lesbian Day? It's an exciting week for us. It's our third year anniversary since the Vienna Conference. Um, we have so many things that we're working on. What should we do today? So anyway, after a series of inter internal discussions, we decided, okay, let's focus on, let's focus on the history of the lesbian movement. Um, why focus on the history of the lesbian movement? Uh, simply because one of the recurring things that kept happening over and over again, especially in the last three years, uh, where so many of us have been focusing on um, on lesbian activism is this recurring realization that lesbians have been across times everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Everywhere, once you start digging into the history and you see things popping up and nowhere because of this continuous phenomenon of invisibilization. So um, this is why you are all here with us today, because you are doing incredible work in terms of getting history of the lesbian movement out. Um, and uh, we have, we're going to be speaking French, English. You might be hearing some Russian as well. Um, myself, my name is Leila. I'm one of the EOC co directors. Um, I want to present to you, I want to share the um, incredibly impressive bios or short CVs of the people that we have in the space today. And then we are going to uh, watch a screening of Dyke Tactics by Barbara Hammer. But I just, before we get to that, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows who's here. So I, uh, let's see, I have a list of CVs here. Uh, we have with us today, uh, speaking from Russia, and I'm, I'm going to be reading these. Uh, I, I, I couldn't uh, memorize them, so I'm gonna be reading them. We have um, Elena, uh, who is the creator and curator of the Moscow Lesbian and Gay uh, Archive. Uh, she was born in Moscow in 1946. And the reason why she speaks French so perfectly is because she was then a French teacher and translator. In the 1990s, she began collecting uh, materials on the history of homosexuality in Russia. 
which later formed the basis of the archive, which has existed for over 20 years. And so she shared with us a little bit that the archive itself, uh, in terms of the collection, uh, it consists of uh, lesbian and gay press, libraries of fiction and popular science, literature, clippings from publications in the general press, reflecting various aspects of the life of sexual minorities, videos, documents on the history of the movement and its current state and digitized um, archive material. Elena has, has shared her, her um, experience, multi-decade experience of archiving in, in, at numerous conferences um, and, and events. Uh, there's a whole list of these, um, which we can share uh, later on, of course. And now I want to move to Susanna. Uh, Susanna is joining us from Slovenia, uh, born in 1963. Uh, she has a degree in sociology and an MA in gender anthropo anthropology uh, from uh, a university in Ljubljana, where she currently lives and, and writes. She's also a translator and essayist, and she's been an activist since 1987. I was I was two at the time, uh, Susanna, <laughs> when you started. <laughs> it is co-founder. Yeah, at least I have two. <laughs> so, um, and is, she's the co-founder of the famous uh, Skuch El El, the first lesbian group in Eastern Europe. Um, and she's a programmer at the Ljubljana LGBT Film Festival. Tadnik <clears throat> has published seven collections of short stories, four novels, as well as monologue and a radio play. And she has published two nonfiction books, one on lesbian movement in Slovenia and another on lesbian literature, a memoir, lesbian activism, step by step, and an essay collection, The End of Tolerance. And you have received uh, uh, numerous awards for your work. And uh, her book and short stories have been translated in more than 20 languages. Well, she herself has translated into Slovene many fiction and nonfiction books and plays by British American and Serbian Croatian and Bosnian authors. And also, did I do I remember correctly that you've translated Judy Judith Butler from English to Slovenian. Right? Okay. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Um Isabel. Um Isabelle is based in France. Isabelle co-founded QueerCode.net after working on memorial issues related to World War II. Uh, QueerCode is a project uh, creating a hybrid digital collection of materials on digital mediations. She's spoken also about her work at numerous um, international events. London uh, in 2016, Queer Code, Accessing LGBT Archives of World War II Through the Skin. Uh, she also spoke at Euro Pride in Marseille in 2013 and 2017 at the Université d'été of l'ARES, which is ARES's Association for Research and Education on the Shoah, about the history of persecution suffered by lesbians during World War II. Isabel studied sexology uh, between 2001-2003 and Art Therapy 2011-2013 in medical school and she's been uh, she was a member of the health committee of the LGBTIQ center. Uh, let's see Isabel you're, you're you have such an impressive CV I, <laughs> I stop it's uh, okay <laughs> I have a many uh, life like a, a, a lot of us, us so <laughs> yeah thank you um and you're also um involved with the list team in uh, the the lesbian group in geneva uh, which is uh particularly exciting also for me because that's where my um uh, activistic years started um then we're moving on to uh, alexa alexa thanks so much for joining us Super happy to have you with us. Alexa Santos is a trained social worker from the University, the Catholic University 
uh, in, uh, in Portugal. From early on, Alexa began volunteering with LGBTI people, having been part of the board at the youth organization Rede Ex Seco. In 2015, Alexa finished an MA on gender, sexuality, and queer theory for the University of Leeds. Uh, it's good to know, by the way, that these types of MAs exist out there. Um, more recently, integrated uh, Immune Institute uh, for Black Women as Vice President, and she is on the board of Club Safo, a women-led organization to, that defends the rights of lesbians in Portugal. Alexa is also collaborated with the study Diversity and Childhood at the Center de Estudos Sociales at the University of Coimbra. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Silvia. Silvia Casolino has a master's in space engineering at the Politecnico of Milano. From 2001 to 2018, she worked for the French Space Agency in Paris. In parallel, Sylvia also worked as a political and cultural activist for the last 20 years. In 2011, she directed her first documentary film, uh, No Gravity, starring some of the greatest women astronauts and the philosopher Donna Haraway. Brought, and this was broadcasted by the German television ZDF. Silvia Casarino teaches management at the Sorbonne and Institute Catholic, uh, Catholic Institute of uh, Paris Universities. And in 2017, uh, she co-created Eurocentral Asian Lesbian Community. After three years of chairmanship, she's currently EOC Executive Co-Director. So I think we have established that we have uh, some of the um, most uh, impressive and accomplished lesbian activists uh, from Europe and Russia in the space. And without further ado, I want to uh, screen Barbara Hammer's uh, Dyke Tactics. So I hope, hopefully, technology will be on our side. And then once we've seen Dyke Tactics, we'll have a little bit of a chat about the, the movie, and then we will get to the presentations. So let me share my screen. Uh, we have, yes, I can normally I should be able to. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Here we go.
Is everybody back? Wasn't that beautiful? Um, the the reason why um, we we when thinking about what uh, what to screen, um, you know, to 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 open the session, uh, we thought that uh, this would uh, probably be the the best. Uh, the best film to project. Um, this this movie by um, uh, Barbara Hamm was actually, uh, she released it in 1974. Uh, she had just started um, studying film and she was already uh, in her early 30s at that point. She had just left her, uh, uh, divorced her husband and uh, she, she made this film, um, and when she speaks about this film, interestingly, she, she mentions that uh, she calls this a lesbian commercial. <laughs> she made this movie for it to be like a lesbian commercial. And um, the reason why we wanted to screen it today is uh, because essentially um, her legacy and her work was always so much about um, archiving what was happening in the lesbian movement, um, reflecting what was happening in the lesbian movement to the wider audience, and then also uh, internally. And so we thought that with this was such a such an appropriate movie um, to start with for this discussion, since you are all involved in your own way, um, you know, with with archiving the the movement and. Um, uh, making our, our histories count. Uh, before we get to the presentations, I was wondering if um, if any of you have any comments uh, that, or impressions uh, or even anecdotes that you'd like to share about uh, about Barbara Hammer or or Dyke Tactics or any of her other work. Susanna. Uh yeah, I remember Barbara Hammer a few years ago. She was a guest at our LGBT film festival. It was a very special moment also when she spoke about her films and she had a um, film workshop. And uh, when we were talking about it, I just thought that was very brave to film it in 1974. I think you wouldn't easily see a film like that today. Thank you. Euh, moi, je ne connais pas euh, tous ces films, mais grâce en fait à, à d'autres lesbiennes, euh, notamment euh, Elisabeth Lebovici, eh bien euh, à Queer Code, on, on a découvert son très très beau film sur euh, Claude Cain. Et là, on est en train de, de coopérer pour euh, avoir les droits pour présenter des extraits euh, de ce, son film dans une de nos cartographies. Parce que pour nous, c'est vraiment important. Son travail, son œuvre, euh, c'est pour nous effectivement une archive pour raconter notre histoire. Donc, euh, c'est très émouvant de l'avoir encore aujourd'hui avec nous. Nathalie, tu veux peut-être... Euh... Yes, I will just give a quick <laughs> said uh, she was saying that at Queer Code um, they were uh, looking at Barbara Hammer's work and those types of works as archives actually of lesbian history and that they um, were uh, getting the rights of Isabel can you uh, say the title of the film you mentioned again 
Le, 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 tu viens de oui. oui, oui, je ne je, veux pas dire de bêtises, donc je n'ai pas dit le titre justement pour ne pas dire de bêtises, je suis en train de le chercher. <rire> Mais uh, c'est sur Claude Carl, là je n'ai pas le titre exact. Claude Carl. There is a, a film code are working on um, getting the rights to um, use uh, that film for one of their cartographies as part of an archive. Et Sylvia, tu avais aussi, euh, tu voulais partager Yes, I, I don't know what, what do you think, but we were talking about, um, um, about Barbara Hammer with, with Leila, and I, I, I was telling her that for my generation, which is more like the, um, the Scooch LL generation, so Leila was two when, when I started also um, being an activist, <laughs> um, <laughs> Suzanne and myself, we are in the same kind of, of um, activism period. Um, it's interesting because Barbara Hammer for me represented the previous generation, the generation from the 70s, uh, the generation of, um, of our mothers somehow. So at the beginning it was difficult um, for me to re relate to her way of, of seeing lesbianism and like you need one additional generation to re get in touch and restart really thinking um, the examples that were uh, just before you. This was the reflection that we were having um, uh, with Leila. I mean, I was the first lesbian film festival I attended. I was really um, not happy of seeing some of the movies that for me were old movies. But now seeing it them now, it's totally different. And I think that it's totally amazing uh, the way Barbara Hammer did images around uh, the, the lesbian iconography. Thank you. And actually the, the movie uh, with Claude Cahin is, I, I think it's the, is it the one Love or Other? Isabel, maybe that's the one you, you were meeting, Love or Other. And um, For, for those that, that might be less familiar with her, uh, with her work, um, you can look it up online. There's, there's a whole list of movies um, that, that are just uh, you know, relevant um, and, and there for anybody who you know, organizes um, events, talks with the community or um, does work around uh, you know, archiving uh, lesbian histories. Um, there's just, uh, you could spend an entire year screening her work and, and, and you, you wouldn't have put it all out there. So anyway, um, very, very exciting. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the uh, presentation part of this, um, this discussion. And we are going to start with uh, Yelena. So for Yelena, um, I'm going to share a video uh, that she would like to suggest um, before uh, taking the floor. Yelena, je vais maintenant um, partager votre vidéo. Uh, et puis, une fois qu'elle sera finie, je vous laisse simplement uh, présenter ce que vous avez uh, à nous partager. C'est OK Merci. D'accord, super. Ok, merci. Parfait, merci. Je vais partager. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, sorry, Leila, can you say about trigger warning, please? Ah, I'm yes, so of course. Thank you, Vlada, for reminding me. Um, for those that have already seen this, uh, this short movie, um, we uh, decided that we would uh, in effect mention that there are some scenes uh, that might be relatively triggering um, because they depict uh, forms of physical violence. So for anybody um, who, who, uh, who feels uncomfortable with that, maybe just uh, look away for uh, about a minute. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to start it now. Everybody, 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 everybody
homophobia and some pretty horrific attacks and murders. In June, an anti-gay propaganda. Принятием нового закона начались репрессии. Как что люди смотрели очень очень косо, это были дикие взгляды, очень такие взгляды каких-то животных. You really can get killed in broad daylight in this town. Мы не готовы жить в шкафу, мы не готовы лгать. Либо вы нас принимаете такими, какими есть, либо вообще не. Пропаганда law has prompted an increase in homophobic violence. For example, the 23-year-old in Volgograd, our driver talked about, who was tortured to death with beer bottles. There has also been a rise in vigilante groups, like the neo-Nazi occupied pedophilia, that hunt down homosexuals online and make YouTube clips of how they abused them, sometimes to death. Crimes are rarely investigated, and the authorities have referred to them as civil movements fighting the sins of society. Ok. Yelena, quand vous êtes prête, c'est à vous. Merci beaucoup de, de m'avoir invité ici et euh, présenté. Euh, et donc, je peux parler euh, immédiatement de ce que vous avez vu. Voilà, ce n'est euh, pas par hasard que j'ai choisi euh, cette, euh, cette vidéo. Euh, bien sûr, l'histoire est très importante et l'activité des, des archives est très importante. Et maintenant, je veux, je veux expliquer pourquoi, quand il s'agit de la visibilité des archives, des archives euh, de Moscou, des archives russes, je suis euh, réservée, je ne fais pas des archives de Moscou, pas de, de sites sur l'Internet, parce que euh, vous voyez les situations où nous pour des archives. Vous, vous pouvez traduire Oui, je vais faire ça. Merci beaucoup. Où tout, tout le monde comprend. Non, je vais, je vais vous traduire rapidement. Mais comme ça, c'est très bien. Deux, trois phrases, oui. je traduis. Voilà, super. So, um, Yelena just uh, mentioned that uh, she chose this video uh, on, on purpose uh, because it helps to il illustrate the, um, the situation on the ground and um, that in effect, uh, the, the history is very, very important. Um, and so is uh, the process of archiving. And now she's going to take us through um, uh, this, this, the actual work of archiving. Yelena, c'est à vous. Merci. Archive, on a été fondé en 1098, quand la situation était plus ou moins calme. Pendant ces années, il fonctionne jusqu'à présent et pendant ces années, nous avons recueilli une immense collection des, des matériaux, des, des livres. Yelena has said that um, the archive started, well, she, she started collecting, building the archive in 1998. Um, back then, the situation was relatively um, calm, she said. And uh, they started with uh, materials and books. And this is when we got relatively disconnected here. Vlada, maybe you can um, check in with Yelena no, to see. I'm trying, don't worry, I do it. I see that she's left the, the space. Okay, let's wait for a second. And
and if the um, if the technical issues persist, Susanna, I suggest that we, if it's okay with you, we'll move on to uh, to your experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. But let's yeah, let's wait for just one second. By the way, I wanted to. Um, I don't know if uh, Marie Vermeeren is listening, but I wanted to give a special uh, shout out to her because she uh, she made it possible for us to be able to actually see dark tactics. So thank you very much, uh, Marie, um, for that. Okay. Any news from Yelena? Uh, just a second. Okay. Any comments on the video that we just saw otherwise in the meantime? Uh, we are still on uh, technical things, so. Okay, okay. Um, so, in that case, um, is she having difficulty connecting back, or? We are trying to uh, fix everything. Mm -hmm. So we need some time, I suppose. Okay, okay. So, uh, Susanna, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So, okay. <laughs> please, merci Isabelle. <laughs> okay, Isab um, Susanna, please, uh, we'll move on to you then, for now. Okay. Yeah, so I will introduce uh, shortly lesbian group, LL. Uh, I'm going to leave many things out and I'm apologizing for pe to people here. I don't want anyone to be to have hard feelings but anyway this is a short period to talk about it so first initiative for lesbian group reaches back in 1985 when Lilith lesbian group was founded uh, in Ljubljana then we found it now I'm going to share um, some photos with you I hope that works Then in 1987, we were invited to prepare a supplement about lesbian love in um, lesbian. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, we could see it. Yeah, good. So this was this was even the cover in 1987. Uh, the cover was made by a Slovenian lesbian artist at the time, uh, Roni. Um, it says, Ljubi Muzenske, we love women. And this was really a huge uh, change in our society. And then we, when we had that, we just decided, okay, let's just say we have a lesbian group. And then we published our um, address and phone number. And this is how we started to uh, find uh, members and then we also wrote a lesbian manifesto at the time and the most important point was saying that we need to break down the silence in our society um, because we are not isolated only from the society but also from each other so at the beginning, the lesbian group LL, it means lesbian Lilith, was part uh, of a feminist group Lilith. And then we decided to work um, on our own. Uh, so the next thing we did uh, was a lesbian zin, which we called uh, Lesbozin. This was all published uh, within Schkutz because we are part of Schkutz Students Cultural and Arts Center. So we started to spread this uh, magazine. 
uh, I think the aims of our group were to cover a wide area of lesbian specifics like culture, movement, uh, lifestyle, and of course history, because we had nothing on lesbians uh, in our society. We were like the first one, the first group to talk about it in uh, public, and we didn't have 20s and 30s like some other bigger cities in uh, Europe, like <clears throat> London or Berlin. And then we found it is very important to work on lesbian history and uh, to archive it. So in uh, 2001, the Lesbian Library and Archive was opened. This was the initiative of uh, Natasha Velikonia, uh, another member of lesbian group, and uh, this is still working. And so we started to collect uh, many things like videos, photos, uh, um, clips uh, from uh, newspapers and things like that. And it also became um, an important researching point also for students and uh, all that. Uh, then in uh, 2012, we had uh, there was a 25 years of lesbian movement and uh, we thought we, we just need to do something because this is a quarter of a century. Uh, so we decided to, to organize a lesbian festival, which was called Lesbian Quarter. Quarter also means a town district in Slovenian language, Četart, so we thought that was a good name. Uh, <clears throat> then Again, Natasha Velikonia and uh, Tatiana Greif published this great book, which means LL25, Lesbian Group 25 Years. It's a history from 1987 to uh, 2012 with many, I think with almost all the events that happened uh, in this time in uh, last 25 years. So this is a very important document. So also at the same time, uh, we cooperated with Marina Gržinić. She's a theorist and filmmaker, uh, a very important one. And she decided to shoot a film, a documentary, 25 years of the lesbian group Škucelel. I think it's also available online, uh, which was very important also because she, uh, she plays the story of lesbian LL in a much broader context of Yugoslavia, which I think is still, of course, very important uh, for us. Um, so what else happened at that time? Yes, yeah, so Lesbian Quarter Festival is still going on. Uh, this year in September, we just had a sixth uh, edition. So maybe I can show you some things uh, we had also lesbian art exhibition. Uh, this was uh, the opening performance by Tatiana Kosmur uh, called the Avatar, uh, which we uh, enjoyed very much. And uh, we also had one of the project is uh, LGBT tour in Ljubljana, which I'm also doing. I mean, this is like an, a project which is ongoing with the uh, cooperation with Alternative Ljubljana. <clears throat> and this is also a very important part of history because we do have spots and places in Ljubljana where we can talk about uh, LGBT history, but maybe just in last hundred years, uh, it, it wasn't easy to find information uh, which would be, I don't know, older than like uh, 50 years. Um, then we also had a, a lesbian photo exhibition by um, Croatian photographer Martina Shalo, uh, that's her speaking. Uh, she has a very interesting exhibition, which is called Hey Boy. And it's about 
not really about butch, but maybe androgynous and non-binary lesbian identities uh, who always get, sometimes have problems in public because people are asking them, what are you? Are you a boy or are you a man? Uh, then we also had Uh, this is from the opening of the exhibition, but in fact, I wanted to show something else. Uh, I like this photo. Uh, this was also at the Lesbian Quarter Festival, and the drawing is from Ana Lucia Šaric and Clara Krecina. Uh, they did this graffiti on the wall of the Lesbian Club Monocle at the Metelko City, so this is most of the team uh, from um, our lesbian festival this year, including a uh, very nice group of volunteers. Uh, so, and there's another project uh, that I'm working on, and this is the digital LGBT archive of uh, at, of Schutz. From so I'm I was doing this, uh, collecting all the photos and every material we had from 1984 on, and I'm working this at the Institute for Contemporary History. Uh, I mean the team there has been very nice, very cooperative, and I'm really proud that this LGBT archive is uh, going to become a part of a national. Slovenian history. This is some of my work. I was going through these really old photos like 1993 and uh, from 80s uh, and collecting them. And uh, I was also collecting mostly data information. So uh, everybody will be later on able to read what's on the photo and uh, it will be the archive will be available to all the researchers uh, so i think this is important step because we had a lot of lesbian archives within our community and i have something at home but then we started to think as a newer generation what will happen after us because everything is changes and uh, we just lost uh, very old offices so uh, it's it's very good that we took the material to the national library uh, so we thought we have to make sure that this archive will be kept on and uh, available. So it will be there within the Institute of Contemporary History. So we don't have to worry uh, about the storage or uh, anything. And before I finish, I would like to mention, I have to mention that uh, lesbian um, literature is very important part uh, of the movement in uh, lesbian movement in Slovenia. We were thinking about it before, why? But I think because me and Natasha Sukic, uh, who is an MP now also, she's also a writer and we were uh, beginners and we thought art is very important part uh, of lesbian uh, movement and history and everything. And we were both writers, it, we became writers later. So we have uh, a lot of very important name of lesbian literature. I would just name a few because I, I want to do that. Uh, Vesna Lemaic, Kristina Hučevar, Natasha Sukic, Vesna Liponik, Natasha Velikonja, Nina Dričević, Sara Lube, Simona Jarala, and a lot of them got books and uh, awards. And this is one thing we are very proud of. And of course, this is books are always uh, a part of history as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna. It was so, it was really powerful listening to you speak out those names. Um, so thanks. And uh, you know, we have this, this term at ELC, we say lesbianizing the institutions. And it mm -hmm. sounds like you're lesbianizing the, the national archives. So that's, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's uh, that, that sounds amazing. Um, I will 
<laughs> I will tell them. <laughs> Yeah, and in terms of the cultural production, um, yeah, this, it, it absolutely, it's just, maybe also it has to do with the fact that after not seeing yourself, your life, your your reality anywhere, you just, okay, you, you then you make it yourself, you create it yourself, and um, maybe that somehow explains the overwhelming amount of cultural production, um, you know, within the lesbian community, I mean, if your work or if your life is censored or invisibilized, then okay, well then you go and you make it happen yourself. Um, yes. There's this famous quote, we are the ones that we've been waiting for, uh, essentially, that explains everything right there. Um, I see Yelena is back with us. Um, so we're gonna try to um, uh, go back and, and listen to her amazing work as well. Um, Elena, vous êtes, vous êtes de retour, je vois. Donc, si vous pouvez nous entendre, euh, ce serait vraiment super que vous, vous essayiez de continuer votre présentation. Vlada, if you can maybe just nudge Yelena. Yelena, nous vous ne vous entendons pas, Включите, пожалуйста, микрофон. Voilà, de Moscou qui existent, ils, euh, ils étaient euh, créés, ils, ils ont euh, fonctionné pendant toutes ces années euh, grâce à l'aide des, des lesbiennes de, de l'Europe et premièrement des lesbiennes de, euh, françaises que je tiens à remercier. C'est Catherine Violet, euh, Suzette Rubichon, Claire Geoffresse et beaucoup d'autres avec, euh, avec qui j'ai été toujours en contact et qui ont beaucoup aidé. Et euh, pas seulement les lesbiennes de, euh, de France, mais euh, aussi de, de, de la Hollande, c'est euh, Marianne Baker et Dieter euh, Waltz, euh, et euh, beaucoup, beaucoup d'autres. Donc, je, je voudrais souligner que les liens, et, et les liens aident beaucoup et c'est très important de, de les garder et de les soutenir. Pardon euh, me... Merci beaucoup, je vais traduire. Alors, ok, so... So Yelena was uh, sharing that actually um, one of the reasons, one of the key reasons why, um, or, or thanks to which uh, the archive for her was possible to uh, to build in, in Moscow was very much um, uh, thanks to the support of uh, uh, other lesbians based in, in Europe. Uh, and here she mentioned particularly uh, three lesbians uh, from France um, uh, and also uh, two lesbians from the Netherlands and I know uh, that one of the one of the lesbians or activists that she mentioned is actually listening to this talk uh, Suzette Robichon I think is I hope that's yes she's here <laughs> donc Suzette Robichon est ici elle nous écoute si jamais <laughs> oui très bien And, um, and but very importantly that these um, that these links um, help enormously and that these links should be uh, cherished and, and valued. Voilà, et les conférences comme celle-ci, je suis très ému d'être invité et de participer à cette conférence, elle permet chaque fois de créer des liens et de, euh, de savoir de nouveaux noms. Je suis euh, 
très impressionnée par la situation en Slovénie où les archives lesbiennes euh, peuvent être partie des, euh, des archives d'État. Ça, c'est sensationnel. Chez nous, il y a un autre problème, de les garder. Nous les mettons aussi sous forme digitale, électronique. Nous avons scanné et mis en forme électronique des, 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 des kilos de, de nos archives. Chez nous, c'est le problème de, de les garder maintenant, de les conserver, vu la situation qui est maintenant dans notre pays. So it's really, um, really meetings like these and uh, conferences more broadly that um, enable creating um, meaningful connections and sharing impressions. And um, Yelena is very impressed, uh, Susanna, with the fact that in Slovenia, you can, you're working on incorporating uh, the lesbian archive into the national archive. Uh, this is, um, the situation is very, very different in Russia, of course, um, where the question is more how actually to keep, to make sure that the, the, uh, the archive can be kept safe um, uh, and uh, in, in the best possible way, especially nowadays, uh, given the situation in the country. Euh, voilà, je, euh, je voudrais dire encore que hum, j'ai parlé des, des archives, j'ai été invité à l'Université des homosexualités euh, à Marseille. Euh, cette année, euh, j'ai parlé des, des archives à Berlin, j'ai parlé de nos archives à Minsk et, euh, et je, euh, je voudrais euh, euh, dire que c'est c'est très important, euh, mais c'était une autre forme. On, peut, on pouvait se voir, on pouvait dire. Maintenant, nous devons, euh, nous devons élaborer euh, autre forme. Et voilà, c'est le premier pas qui coûte. Et voilà cette conférence qui a... Euh, qui, qui n'était pas facile à organiser et, 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 voilà, et participer à cette conférence, mais il faut, il, euh, parce qu'on ne sait pas combien de temps dure cette situation, mais il faut, euh, et il faut, euh, il faut élaborer de nou nouvelles formes. Je vous remercie beaucoup de m'avoir invité et voilà, je répète, c'est le premier pas qui coûte. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Elena. Uh, Elena was sharing that um, in the past times she's presented uh, the work of her archive uh, in Marseille. Uh, she's also shared uh, her work in, in Berlin more recently. And um, that the meetings in person are um, actually very great, uh, but also that, you know, given the, the situation in the current times that we just need to Uh, keep on going and um, be creative and think about new ways of, uh, of connecting and which we are effectively doing, um, doing today, meeting, uh, meeting online. Um, merci beaucoup, Elena. Uh, on va peut-être revenir vers vous après avec uh, une question ou deux. Merci. Merci bien. Uh, so, next, uh, I wanted to invite uh, Sylvia to, to share... Um, some of the work that uh, ELC has been doing in its, uh, through its research. And I'm going to, do you want me to share your presentation or? Yes, please. Okay. So one second. Et j'aimerais commencer juste par dire à Yelena que c'est très important ce qu'elle a dit. It's very important what, what Yelena just said. Is she said that, that this, um, um, this Facebook Live um, internet conference that we are having is vital for uh, lesbian archives in this particular moment. And I think that she is totally right. Je pense, Yelena, que vous avez totalement raison à dire que Uh, se rencontrer de cette manière comme aujourd'hui sur, uh, sur internet et créer des espaces pour en partager des uh, idées sur les archives, etc. C'est vital et c'est très important. Ok, alors, 
Merci, Sylvia. Voici quand tu es prête. Yeah, I, I, I will just, um, I will just start to describe what was our um, uh, studies for the last month. Uh, what happened one year ago is that the German Ministry um, for Equality, Families, uh, Elderly People uh, and Youth uh, contacted ELC to, to do a, a study, a study um, which they, they need to have an idea of what was the, the, the situation, the status of uh, lesbian organizing uh, in Europe. And so we were very, very happy to, to, to do something like that because we never had any, of course, any funds to do uh, this kind of work. And I uh, took in charge the first part of the study, which was the um, historical analysis. And at the beginning of this uh, historical analysis on, on how lesbians had organized themselves um, during the past, let's say, 50 years, because this was the, the frame that we decided for ourselves, uh, I was really afraid and a little bit depressed. Because at the beginning, I thought I will, uh, it will be uh, impossible to find something. It will be even more difficult in Europe where Every different country has a different language, so all archive will be scattered and in different languages. So I was quite desperate at the beginning. But then, um, little by little, uh, when you start grasping a small thing and you follow the, <laughs> the thing, then there are a lot, a lot, a lot of materials that uh, emerged from this only four five month research. It was a very short research, but the amount of, of sources, archives, which were translated in English uh, from every different country in Europe, it was amazing. So the lesbians have somehow managed in a magical way to store somewhere um, their own archives and the richness of what happened the la in the last 15 years. Here I would, uh, you can go to the second slide, uh, Leila. Here I would just give you a small, really small um, uh, generic frame. Um, lesbians are have been from the archive that we have found uh, lesbians lesb the lesbian movement has been instrumental in the constructor in the construction of the, the lgbti movement because the organization of the first um, um, pride marches uh, all around europe were a lot of time made and, and organized uh, by lesbian activists so uh, lesbians and LGBTI movement are really um, um, uh, very tightened and interwoven. Then the, the slide after, um, it's, there is also a huge link between, of course, the lesbian movement and the feminist movement. Here in this um, picture, you can see um, an image from the 70s, uh, an image from um, a demonstration, which was a creation point of one of the most important feminist movement in France, uh, in, Fran uh, yeah, in France, and, 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 and there were um, mainly lesbians at this, at this demonstration. I mean, altogether there were all, only nine, but seven more or less out of nine uh, were lesbian activists. And then, next slide, um, of course, as you probably already know, um, lesbians have been instrumental uh, um, activists, um, amazing as activists during times of crisis. Um, lesbians were very much involved in um, the fight again, against HIV, and, 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 and of course, uh, they are today involved in everything that concerns uh, the COVID uh, crisis and the, the fight against this um, 
quite problematic situation that we are experiencing now. Um, I wanted to give you uh, only three examples um, of um, three different countries and some stories that we found out. Um, Ireland is the first example. Uh, in Ireland, there is um, um, an, an NGO which is called Link, which is a lesbian and bisexual NGO, and they exist uh, almost for the last 20 years, and they are supported by um, the local um, authorities, government of the Cork city. Cork is the second biggest city in Ireland, and they told us during uh, an interview that the city council uh, just acknowledged that with a, it was a great investment <laughs> to invest in lesbians because lesbians then were doing a lot, a lot of work. So for the last 20 years, they were able to stay alive uh, and continue, uh, continue uh, uh, organizing um, around themselves uh, because of the small support from um, the city of, of Cork. And just to remember that Ireland, it's a, a very old tradition of lesbianism. Ireland is the place where uh, the first lesbian lives conference were organized um, more than 20 years ago. And it was also the place where one of the first, first um, magazines, uh, let's, let's now we will we call them fanzines, but uh, were published. And it was Urania in really in the 20s. So it was a lesbian uh, publication sent by mail uh, during the 20s and it, they were speaking about lesbianism as in the way that they were speaking about it at that time, calling it uh, Uranism. So the next example is uh, coming from Hungary. Uh, Labris, it's also a very, it's, it's an historical NGO. And here you can see some of the pictures of the archive they, they have put together and the histories they are keeping uh, record of because they, are, they, have, they have published a book very interesting book with um, the personal histories of uh, almost 20 uh, lesbians of um, uh, which are uh, older than, than 15 years old. So um, let's say the histories of the lesbianism in Hungary from the end of the 60s until the 90s. And more than that, the, um, Labris, it's also a festival. Every year they have um, a lesbian festival, um, a cultural festival. So Labris, it's also a very important example of lesbian organizing. And one should know that Labris has been really strongly impacted by the actual situation in Hungary. And so we are really thinking about them and supporting them as much as we can. And then the third example um, is um, uh, Spain. And Spain, it's, it's also interesting for us because uh, Spain has a, a very specific history um, because of the um, uh, interactions between the Frankism and of course uh, the, um, let's say the feminist movement uh, which were taking place uh, during the seventies in other very near countries. So from what we have learned from uh, activists and, and researchers uh, on the ground, like, um, uh, for example, Luca Paratero, um, they were a really a big, a huge um, um, uh, influence between the lesbian movement and the trans movement uh, in Spain uh, uh, during the end of the 80s and in the 90s, which created something that now it's called um, uh, trans feminism, but which is a typical kind of uh, trans feminist, uh, uh, let's say a Spanish kind of trans, trans feminist, which is really starting from a common experience. And it's not imported from uh, the UK or Canada or the US, it's really um, um, an experience of working together between the lesbian movement in Spain and the trans movement in Spain. That's, I think that's it. And, and we can talk more uh, later if you want to. Thanks, Sylvia. Uh, and, and also, um, I mean, this is, this is so fascinating. And just so you know, this is only one part of the study that we're going to be releasing. So, um, Stay tuned and it will be uh, released sometime in, in November. Uh, so next, I want to invite uh, Isabel. 
to share uh, the uh, incredible work also that uh, she is doing with uh, uh, with Queer Code. Isabelle, quand tu es prête, c'est à toi. Ok, merci. Alors, je suis très fière d'être parmi vous pour partager ce, ce moment. Je ne sais pas comment je vais faire des signes avec Nathalie pour la traduction, mais on va se trouver. <rire> Euh, depuis 25 ans, euh, nous explorons beaucoup de formes de l'activisme lesbien pour rendre visible l'histoire des lesbiennes et des femmes qui ont aimé des femmes durant la Seconde Guerre mondiale, des manifestations, des interpellations publiques, des débats, des expositions. À toi, Nathalie. Nathalie, on ne t'entend pas bien. D'accord. Euh, Est-ce que vous m'entendez là Non Un petit peu mieux, mais ce n'est pas génial. D'accord. Est-ce que c'est mieux Oui, ça c'est mieux. Ok. Um, so Isabelle was saying that um, they've been uh, working on the documentation and having interest in the lives of uh, women uh, that loved women lesbians uh, during World War II. And this work has been going on since 25 years. Alors là, je vais plus parler de ce qu'on fait depuis cinq ans avec QR code. And so uh, now she will speak about uh, what they've been doing in the past five years with QR code. Notre nom de collectif est un jeu de mots qui fait référence au code des résistantes, comme ici Claude Cain, au code employé par les lesbiennes pour se rencontrer, mais aussi au code craqué par Alan Turing et ses équipes. Là, vous voyez une machine qui est donc dans un musée anglais. Et puis, c'est aussi, bien sûr, une référence au QR code que vous voyez à l'écran. And so the name of uh, their collective queer code is a, a name game um, between all the four different um, references that we just saw in the image. Face au mécanisme d'invisibilisation de l'histoire des lesbiennes, euh, nous avons créé, décidé de créer des coopérations très multiples, et je vais essayer de vous en présenter quelques-unes aujourd'hui. Euh, les archives et les histoires, nos histoires existent, notamment celles de, des femmes qui ont vécu la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. So the idea of the collective is to work against the mechanisms of um, invisibilization uh, that are in place um, against the women that have lived through the Second World War and the uh, One of the strategies is archives. Pour accéder à ces récits, à ces histoires, nous avons décidé de créer un réseau de coopération qui allie des activistes comme moi à des chercheuses universitaires, à des artistes, à des archivistes bénévoles ou salariés, à des hétérosexuels qui ont envie de partager l'histoire de leur mère, de leur tante. So they put in place a network of cooperations of uh, activists, uh, researchers, artists, um, also people that just volunteer to uh, be part of establishing uh, the archive, heterosexual women as well that want to be part of this. Euh, nous avons entre 16 et 78 ans, euh, certaines sont françaises, d'autres sont allemandes vivant en France, d'autres ont des campagnes en, en, Fran en allemande. Euh, bref, nous sommes très très diverses dans notre, nos histoires culturelles et, et nos histoires euh, de génération. Et c'est notre diversité qui permet d'accéder à ces histoires et à ces archives. The members of the collectives are, are really uh, diverse. The ages range from between 16 and 78. There's French women, German women, um, many, many different uh, backgrounds and cultural backgrounds that uh, together help establish um, the stories. Et nous tentons de ne pas reproduire la hiérarchisation des savoirs et uh, uh, nous 
partageons pour nous euh, les histoires comme les films, comme Aimé Jaguar ou des séries télé comme Enquête codée, euh, pour nous, c'est aussi important que des articles universitaires. Knowledge and stories, and so uh, television series are just as important as uh, research, research papers and the establishment of uh, the knowledge needed for the archive. Il y a cinq ans, nous avons créé un site internet pour rendre visible toutes ces ressources que nous avions trouvées collectivement. Et on peut voir que dans l'arborescence de notre site, nous ne hiérarchisons pas donc, la culture, l'histoire. Et donc, vous, vous avez donc une rubrique histoire et une rubrique culture qui sont au même niveau. Euh, pour nous, c'est vraiment très important euh, cet aspect-là. And so five years ago, um, this website was uh, created and uh, the, the collector really tries to not have a hierarchy between either culture or history and to have that on the same level. And that's why on the website, there is um, a culture um, part and the history part and they're really, um, there is no hierarchy between them. Um. Créer un réseau, c'est complexe, mais surtout ce qui est complexe, c'est quand on est euh, en tant que lesbienne, euh, des personnes minorisées, précaires, on n'a pas forcément les mêmes rythmes de vie que des salariés des institutions qui peuvent garder euh, des archives. Et donc, pour nous, on a des fois des difficultés de temporalité communes, mais quand on arrive à avoir des temps communs, comme ici, euh, pour les journées du patrimoine et du matrimoine euh, à Nantes, dans la bibliothèque, quand une bibliothécaire nous montre des archives et que nous, lesbiennes, nous pouvons parler en donnant des informations, en complétant euh, des éléments, en unissant nos voix. Là, c'est très puissant, euh, mais c'est très rare. En tout cas, en France, c'est un gros, gros enjeu d'avoir des temporalités communes et de pouvoir parler à égalité entre personnes euh, voilà, ayant plein de savoirs que nous, activistes lesbiennes, avons comme les, les archivistes. So, uh, creating a network is really uh, complex, and especially if you're um, part of a precarious uh, minority, it's really difficult to find time together. You don't have the same privilege as uh, people that um, have a salary from an institution to build an archive. And so the time together is very rare and precious, but when um, we can unite our voices and um, speak in an equal way, um, it's very, very precious and important. Thank you, Nathalie. Euh, nous organisons aussi euh, des moments où en fait on se réapproprie ces archives. Euh, pour nous, c'est très important. Par exemple, là, on voit donc on est, euh, on a photocopié des, des archives et en fait on est en train de créer des, des collages ensemble. Euh, pour nous, en fait, ça, ces collages, ça permet vraiment d'incorporer euh, même presque physiquement euh, ces savoirs, ces archives. Uh, the collective also organizes moments where um, they reappropriate uh, the archives. Here is an image of um, a moment where uh, collages were made from uh, content of the archive, and, and so this idea of embodying uh, the archive and, and going through a physical process with it is uh, also really important. Et euh, ensuite, nous partageons toutes ces ressources sur notre euh, website. Euh, autant, et bien là, on voit une photographie euh, de Claude Klein et Marcel Moore, que les collages réalisés en atelier, que des extraits de films de Barbara Hammer. J'ai retrouvé le nom euh, de son film. C'est euh, Lover Other, The Story of Claude Klein et Marcel Moore. Vive Barbara. <rire> And uh, so um, all of these resources are shared on the website and uh, Isabel found the name of um, the Barbara Hammer film we referred to earlier in the conversation. It's uh, Lover Other. Ainsi, en fait, nous illustrons nous-mêmes notre histoire et c'est vraiment important puisqu'on manque d'accès à ces matériaux. Et aussi, euh, notre objectif, c'est que chacune se sente légitime de participer, que chacune, quel que soit son background, ses études, sa classe sociale, se sente légitime à, à participer à constituer des archives. And so, uh, through the website, uh, we, they illustrate themselves uh, their story, uh, our story, and in this way, um, each and uh, everyone is 
has everyone can participate in constituting this archive, and it's not something um, independent. And um, nous essayons de d'aller dans les lieux de, de nos communautés, dans, dans les bars, dans les lieux associatifs, uh, de mobiliser par uh, des jeux uh, pour transmettre l'histoire, notre histoire lesbienne. Uh, et um, ben, ces moments, en fait, nous permettent aussi ben, d'apprendre d'autres. Et uh, par exemple, là, dans un, un, un hacker space, et, um, et c'est vraiment très riche. And so the collective tries to go into community spaces of lesbians and um, through games and really the exchange of uh, places that um, belong to the community, try to create um, an exchange around uh, lesbian history. Et, uh, comme euh, parfois les archives ne vont pas à nous, et ben nous les apportons euh, à notre communauté. Par exemple, ici, à la journée contre l'homophobie, avec l'estime, on était euh, à l'université, rencontrer les étudiantes, les professeurs, et leur permettre d'ouvrir des, des boîtes d'archives pour découvrir euh, l'histoire lesbienne. And, uh, since the archives don't come to us, they take the archives... Um to places uh, of the community. For example, here, um, uh, this is an event that took place in the University of Geneva, where uh, boxes of archives were brought to the, to the space. Et on essaie d'avoir des dispositifs ludiques pour uh, imaginer si nous avions ces archives dans nos lieux associatifs, ça prendrait de la place. Donc là, par exemple, on voit des, des boîtes d'archives qui représentent toutes les archives qui, ont, qui sont sur notre site internet. Since the archives uh, physically would take so much space, um, they try to implement the archives in fun ways uh, in uh, spaces. For example, here in this image, you can see uh, something that represents the archives symbolically with a link uh, to the website. Juste très rapidement, pour nous aussi, en fait, les archives, c'est aussi nos corps. Et donc, c'est vrai que nos corps racontent une histoire. Là, on peut voir un projet des archives canadiennes qui ont demandé aux lesbiennes, aux gays, aux bi et aux trans de raconter l'histoire de leur tatouage. Et là, c'est un, une réappropriation d'un symbole d'oppression qu'ont subi des lesbiennes déportées par d'autres générations. And uh, so um, the collective also sees uh, the, the body as archives. And this is um, uh, an event where um, lesbians were asked to speak about uh, what the tattoos represent. And this is uh, a symbol that was uh, tattooed on lesbians during the Second World War. And um, so they reappropriated uh, this symbol. and. Spoke about. Et nous aussi, en fait, on, on utilise notre corps pour en fait interagir et faire des performances dans l'espace public, dans, dans les clubs. Et là, on, avec ce, cet autocollant sur la peau, on accède en fait aux ressources de notre site internet. Et c'est aussi un geste de renversement, comme disait Monique Wittig, par rapport à l'oppression. Et pour nous, voilà, il y a plein, plein d'autres dispositifs à, à, à imaginer, toujours en lien, comme le disait Elena tout à l'heure. Ce qui est important, c'est d'être en lien. Um, so, um, this is uh, a performance or a, an event. Where, um, again, the body was used as archive, and so stickers uh, with the queer code on. Um, the skin and um, all the time was this idea of money we think of um, <laughs> overturning this boat. So if anyone can jump in here, renversement. Overturning. Overturning. Um, Turning upside down. Turning upside down. And um, also, um, as Yelena said, uh, this idea of uh, connecting uh, with others that is really important. Um, merci beaucoup pour nous. Voilà, chacune est indispensable, même si on a l'impression de ne pas l'être. Et nous, nos, nos, notre objectif, c'est justement de sensibiliser toutes les lesbiennes à dire qu'elles sont act les actrices de notre histoire. Merci. 
And so everyone is really important, even if they feel that they're not. And so um, the aim of the collective is really to sensitize lesbians to their importance. Merci énormément, Isabelle. Merci beaucoup, Nathalie, aussi, pour la traduction. Uh, c'est thank you so much uh, both it's um, uh, stunning uh, I, 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 I'm so incredibly uh, intrigued by the various um, mediums that you use uh, in, in your work also incorporating the, the body itself um, is, is simply amazing and you mentioned um, uh, generations uh, in in your work, so uh, that gives me a nice um, word to transition to Alexa. Uh, Alexa, I think you're. We are probably more uh, on the same side, also generation wise, <laughs> uh, or I think you're even. You might be even a bit, a bit younger. Um, so. We thought it would be very, very exciting to hear from you also, um, essentially being, you know, being from this generation where, uh, so in, in, for those that are in their mid thirties, you know, we, computers came into our lives, phones and computers came into our lives at around 15 or so. But I think for you, you were really born into a world where everybody has a phone, everybody has a laptop, uh, computer, computers are everywhere in, in learning spaces, universities, and so on. So uh, it's really interesting to hear from you. I mean, how, you know, what work are you doing in terms of archiving and, and building, rebuilding the lesbian movement uh, in, in Portugal? And also, um, because of, uh, you know, because of the current discussions around, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and, um, uh, you know, also, I mean, we talked here about um, looking in the, into the histories of what happened during the Shoah, you know, we're also trying to understand how, how can we take uh, from some communities doing work in terms of archiving their histories and maybe pull those examples into, you know, the lesbian movement. How to how do you um, uh, work around all of those really key issues? Uh, Alexa, the floor is yours. Hi, <laughs> hello everyone. I, I know I look very young, but I'm not that young. <laughs> so that's the first thing I want to say. Second thing is just is that I I would really like everybody to talk about what they're doing in terms of race in their countries and in their work. Um, I feel like um, most of the times uh, when I am speaking, um, I'm always kind of uh, questioned about race. And uh, so I would really like everybody else to um, talk about that subject too. If we have time, I'm not sure if we do have <laughs> but um but yeah i mean i'm i i want i really want to talk a little bit about how uh club safu uh which is an organization that has been around since 1996 in portugal i mean we've we we see that um there's a lot of of of, of experiences within lesbian activism that start pretty early or much earlier than, than, than in Portugal, but um, our dictatorship ended in 74. So it's really interesting how um, uh, Dyke Tactics is actually a movie from 74, which was the year um, our <laughs> dictatorship ended. So it's actually really interesting. So I wanted to share my screen and um, maybe um, present a little bit um, around um, around this. So um, as I was saying, Club Safu is an organization um, that's been around since 96. Uh, we've been doing work um, that is mostly um, based on, on, on a few pillars, which is um, that we are not only in big cities, we really want um, to work outside of the big cities um, so around the entire country, 
we really want to bring um, inclusivity. So we don't want a club staff to be just um, white <laughs> uh, and, um, and able-bodied people and things like that. But we're also very much um, preoccupied and worried with uh, the idea of um, bringing together several gen generations of, of lesbians and women that have relationship with women. Um, so that's basically the three pillars that we find are really, really important to us. Um, and, um, but it's, it's actually kind of really interesting how uh, some of us have already touched a few subjects when we talked about, you know, having a communal temporality and being able to find time to do this work while at the same time we're doing so many other things <laughs> um, and also having our bodies as archives but also as you know political subjects and and also naming ourselves as feminists and naming ourselves as um, who we are and I mean we know that the word lesbian is still kind of very much uh, not used and kind of ostracized by people because it's very political. So I think it's really interesting how how um, we are in so many different places, but at the same time we are um, kind of having the same um, worries. So I wanted to show a little bit about a little bit of pictures of, of um, what I find are important to um, the type of, 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 of work that we do. So I think it's very important to bring people together. So to have times for discussions, to have times where we can share, um, but then also the idea of us as um, people who uh, can manifest, can go to the streets. And, and, and I've, I've been finding really interesting how Susanna kind of talked about um, a little bit about that and and how we kind of move in different but in similar ways. Um, Zona Livre is our magazine. We've been um, doing it since 1997 and our last issue was actually um, last month <laughs> and um, this is already our 68th issue so we've been doing this for this for, for 68 times. Um, it started as a, as a page in 1997, September 1997, and now it's, a, it's a, an entire magazine that we kind of get, get together and build. And we kind of try and bring together uh, several um, accounts and several um, different ways of looking at what being a lesbian is, but then also the idea of womanhood and, and queerness. So we try and invite migrants and black people and people that identify as queer um, and people that move in different um, names and, and ways of, of calling ourselves. I think it's very interesting and important that we, um, that documenting starts to become something that is available online and in different platforms. So, I mean, I think that the pandemic really helped us look at ways of, of having conversations um, in different ways and use, using different means. And I think um, that that also makes it possible that we are here today from different parts of the world and, and, and having this conversation. I think it's um, more than anything, I think, um, it's more and more and more important that we find ways to archive uh, who we are. And in terms of, of the way we are doing it in Portugal, it has to do with the fact that it's, um, there's not many lesbians that are willing to uh, do activism. And um, it's very difficult to sometimes map uh, where where the where where the activism happened, and so I I, I really wanted to name a few people that really inspire me to do this um, as part of the board today. So um, Annabella Rocha, Eduardo Ferreira, Fabiola Cardoso, who is um, a deputy at the um, at the General Assembly in Portugal, which is super cool. Um, and I think that. You know, looking at these women in Portugal that have been part of Club Saf, that have, you know, really um, worked 
so that I could walk in my shoes um, and really be presenting this and, and looking at the work that they've done is really amazing. Um, what we're trying to do and the reason why we people always ask me, why haven't why haven't uh, you, you know why don't you think we should create something new? I mean, um, Club Saf is, is is kind of an old organization. It's kind of a an organization made by you know people who are a bit squared minded and and things like that. And I was always very uh, adamant that we need um, this uh, history to be um, put forward. We need to be talking about the people that have. Uh, walk the walk <laughs> and that really made this happen for us so what one of our main goals um, is to create an archive of Portuguese lesbians um, what we've it's really interesting because along the process of, of it's been more or less a year since we started this process of, of, of getting um, Club Safu running again because uh, it's it, it was like um, not uh, very active for about four or five years and so within this year we've we've got so many messages of people saying look i have books that i want to give you i have videos that i want you to have i have journals that i need you to that i really want to uh put out there and so we're really looking I mean, this was really inspiring and hearing every single one of you was really inspiring because we are on the verge of trying to get that archive here in or something similar uh, 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 of an archive here in Portugal with our stories, with our history. I mean, there's no such thing as a, as a lesbian documentary in Portugal talking about our history. So I think it's... Um, I mean, I really want everybody's contacts and everything because I really think that um, we can work together in order to be able to showcase this this history and also diversify our encounters and who gets to speak about, you know, being a lesbian, um, not only in Portugal, but I mean, around uh, all our countries, because I mean, um, usually the, the, the pictures that we have of black lesbians are not from our countries, are not locals. They are usually uh, from the US and things like that. And sometimes that is like, that that is kind of the, the 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 pillar for people to talk about. Oh yeah, but that's the US, you know, that is something that only happened there, you know, the progress <laughs> was there prior to any other country. And it's not true. So I think it's one of the things that we need to kind of worry about and uh, that is in our list of concerns is to bring people um, to a round table where we can talk and speak about um, difference within our movement um, and diversity uh, within uh, what we're doing as collectives. Um, and, and really having um, a tap on what we as maybe more privileged, maybe more um, in tune of our history and in our history can do to support other people um, and to help them understand uh, the history that we have. I mean, what, what I've, I've, looking at what Queer Code has been doing is like, okay, that's interesting. That's something that we can we can we can actually tap into. Not only having our bodies coded, but then having the city coded. That I mean, I imagine like having huge, you know, QR codes throughout the city where people can access our information and things like that. And and having, for instance, uh, Susanna was talking about having an LGBTI tour, and I imagine having queer. Um, uh, having QR codes throughout the city that explains how that's how that place is queer, you know. So I think it's um, it's there's I mean you said it as well. Um, there's so much that we can imagine uh, nowadays that we can do to appropriate space to occupy. So I mean I'm really keen on finding out what we can do because I mean at the same time we also know. Uh, for instance, in Portugal, we have the experience that there's also many lesbians who 
are suffering and are in need of support of so many kinds. So it's also kind of a challenge to be doing visibility work while also supporting, while also creating um, responses that um, really empower other lesbians or women that have relationship with women. So um, I think that's that's really, and having this precarious work, right? So, I mean, I'll, being voluntarily doing this <laughs> most of the time. So I think it's, it's really what we now, uh, especially within this pandemic, are, are kind of looking at as an organization. And we're hoping that, especially with uh, doing work with other people and other organizations, we can actually um, build stronger networks and then having more uh, responses and answers and work that is maybe, who knows, you know, applicable um in so many different realities but then done together who knows <laughs> great thanks so much alexa uh so much so much food for thought there um and i uh you know um i mean i can speak from my from my own uh, personal experience just uh uh briefly you know when i was when i was growing up um I was very, I, I didn't know how accepting Judy, like the Jewish community would be towards me being a lesbian. And so it was always like, oh, can I mesh those two, you know, identities together? It seems, it seems very difficult. So also uh, when I stumbled upon the work of uh, Queer Code, I mean, you know, the, <laughs> You can imagine the explosion in, in my head in the sense that this is an organization putting energy into looking at what happened to Jewish lesbians during World War II. I mean, this is, this is simply in, incredible. So also that's another example of, um, you know, uh, looking at, let's say the minority within the minority. So this is also, I just wanna share that this is also a hugely important uh, discussion for me. Um, so are there any, I'm, I, I have a feeling that you all have burning questions for each other. <laughs> so because I have the huge privilege of being able to ask, contact you relatively easily directly to ask you follow-up questions, I'm, I'm going to withhold mine and I want to give the space here uh, for you to, to just ask each other if you have any questions and um, maybe we can, uh, we can start. What we'll do is we'll start with in the, in the order of, of, of presenters and, and just kind of see how that goes. So, um, Yelena, vous êtes avec nous toujours? Oui, ah, mais on vous entend pas. <laughs> Attendez. Je vais, je vais vous... Oui, oui. Ah, voilà. Maintenant, vous m'entendez? Je... Oui, on vous entend. Très attentivement, c'est très intéressant. Et je... Oui, bon, je vais remercier, euh, vous remercier après. Oui, Mais je <rire> suis fait, avec vous. Ne oui, vous je voulais vous, vous donner simplement l'occasion, euh, si vous avez une question, en fait, à, à l'une de notre speaker, euh, ou quelque chose sur lequel vous vouliez rebondir. On va faire une rapide tournée comme ça, parce qu'aussi on n'a plus beaucoup de temps, mais je sens, on sent qu'on est très intéressés les unes euh, par les autres, ce qui est absolument magnifique. Donc si vous avez une question, vous vouliez rebondir sur quelque chose qui s'est dit, euh, l'occasion est à vous. Bon, merci beaucoup. Je tiens, premièrement, je tiens à remercier et vous personnellement et Vlada qui m'a traduit et qui a fait beaucoup de choses pour organiser, pour que je participe. Bien sûr, les problèmes techniques sont les problèmes techniques, mais on apprend beaucoup de choses et c'est... Euh, mal, euh, malgré que je suis dans les archives depuis des années et des années et j'ai eu beaucoup de contacts euh, avec les lesbiennes de, de l'Europe, 
euh, gr grâce à mes amis françaises, surtout espagnoles, euh, mais euh, on apprend chaque fois beaucoup de choses nouveaux. J'ai appris beaucoup et euh, il y a des directions où on peut aller et où on peut apprendre. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir invité et, de, et à tous les participantes qui, euh, qui ont élargi mes, or, mes horizons. Oui, merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. So, Yelena was saying uh, that despite having been um, working on, on, on building her archive for multiple decades at this point, uh, there's always Um, and this discussion really uh, proved it yet again. There's always room for uh, just further learning. And uh, she's shared that she um, has gained tremendous knowledge from every one of your, uh, every one of your um, presentations. And she thanks, she thanks Vlada also for her, for her support mm -hmm. in making sure that uh, Yelena can be here with us today. And then we have uh, Susanna. Yes, um, I would like to thank all the speakers, Isabel, Silvia, Elena, uh, Alexa, and you, Leila. Uh, I think we should sometimes continue this discussion. And I was glad to hear I'm not the only one being that old that I have to work on the archive, as I hear jokes for my friends. Um, so I'm just happy to be part of this and maybe a question, I would save questions for uh, the next time. Super, and Sylvia? Yes, I would just um, like to add one point, uh, which is that um, from the study I was describing um, about the history of lesbian, the lesbian movement during the last 15 years, um, as I was telling at the beginning, um, it's fascinating how much material is out there and the time we had to, um, to accomplish this, this huge study was of course super short so we will go out with a, a publication but which is far from being uh, comprehensive of all the informations so I really hope that we can continue what we are doing here and I really hope that at one point uh, we can also have um, a, a, a longer discussion to try to put together all these different inputs from different uh, European countries and also from Russia and ex-Soviet spaces and, and try to build together a, a, a more comprehensive history of, of what was the, the what were the, the lesbian movements, um, uh, the lesbian political movements during those last uh, 15 years, 15 years. Thank you, uh, Isabel. Tu, tu veux que je te traduise radio, euh, rapidement Merci. Ça va aller euh, Je préfère que tu traduises. Euh, oui, mais comme, comme toutes, euh, elle, vraiment beaucoup de choses apprises et inspirantes. Et, euh, et je crois que vraiment cette dimension de, de réseau, c'est indispensable. Ça m'a encore vraiment beaucoup inspiré ce qui a été partagé par, par chacune. Et, euh, et, et c'est vrai que c'est aussi ces liens, on a évoqué des noms. Moi, je n'ai pas fait aussi toute une liste de personnes, mais certaines personnes on a en commun, comme Suzette Robichon, mais aussi d'autres générations. Et, euh, et c'est vrai que ce que j'ai aussi... À... Ce qu'évoquait Alexa sur occuper l'espace, c'est quand même un enjeu indispensable. En France, les archives lesbiennes non, non, sont en quête d'un lieu physique parce que, effectivement, nous à QR Code, on présente des archives sur le net, mais on a besoin de lieux physiques et de moyens. Et, euh, et là, je pense qu'on a vraiment besoin de travailler en réseau pour, euh, voilà, pour, pour trouver euh, des, des ressources, pour trouver des façons de faire euh, passer le message aux institutions. Nathalie, tu veux y aller ou Je, je t'en prie. Ah, tu me laisses traduire, d'accord. Um, yeah, so Isabelle was saying that, um, so it seems like this was a very interesting conversation 
um, so far for for uh, all of us, which is um, amazing. Uh, also something that uh, Isabel would like to continue the work in um, uh, in in. Uh, Working as an as a network, let's say, on this topic is something that could be very interesting to uh, to bring forward. And also, this point that um, that Alexa mentioned in terms of um, uh, the the need for an actual physical space to put the archive, which is something that um, that Isabel is is uh, working on with her uh, with her colleagues. Uh, and friends and the other point, and I also, of course, this is also something uh, that for ELC is, is a big um, uh, point that we flag uh, whenever possible, is this um, the, the, the need for financial support at the end of the day, uh, which, which we haven't really discussed during this talk, but I think it's still good that we get that out here, um, that uh, there is there is need for financial support at the end of the day to carry all of this um, all of this work out as well. Uh, merci beaucoup, Isabelle. Uh, Alexa, please. Yeah, I also wanted to thank you for for your work. I mean, I I didn't even know the ELC existed until like a couple of months ago, so. <laughs> Um, I, I really, I really thank you for for inviting me for for, for this conversation and, and to the possibility to be in touch with with these amazing um, people here. Um, I really, really, really think that it's never much to stress the um, need to make these things and these archives, these histories, these um, efforts um, available and uh, accessible. Uh, so um, we are always talking about if we're ever going to do an archive, it has to be a library. <laughs> it has to be a place where people can actually go and watch the movies and access the, the, the files. Um, and we're also always thinking about how can we do this? I mean, um, Leila, you, you said it well, without funding, there's no way that we can uh, do this. I mean, we can, we have had different examples here of how that's possible but um i mean it would be huge if 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 we could um do this um not having to worry about um paying our bills and uh how are we going to um put food on the table at the end of the day so yeah so i mean definitely accessibility and funding are just two of the uh, of the last concerns that i wanted to leave here and Thank you, thank you so much for, for sharing and for being here and for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so we've gone a little bit over, over time, also taken into account that we started a little bit later, um, but this has been um, just such a, such a thought provoking conversation. I wish it could go on. I wish we could, you know, go for drinks after this and, um, all of that, <laughs> but we'll keep that for um, we'll keep that for next time. And what we'll do is that uh, we'll be sure to keep this um, this group connected to to bring the conversation further. Um, and hopefully, further down the line, we can also meet in person all together at one of our upcoming events. Uh, and yeah, and I just have to say it's it's been a huge honor sharing you know the space with you all today. Uh, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution to uh, you know the the lesbian movement. I think it's fair to say. And uh, I want to thank also more on a on a, a practical sense again, uh, Vlada. Thank you very much uh, for your support. Uh, in, in helping to organize this event. Um, and I also want to thank again uh, Marie uh, from the Feminist uh, Film Festival uh, here in Brussels, El Tourne, for um, making it possible for us to, to uh, screen Dyke Tactics uh, today for International Lesbian Day. And I think that, I think that's it. <laughs> I think, I think we're done. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Leila. Have a really bye. nice afternoon. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 -bye. Okay, I think we... Uh...